the G-rated version is there they are, get them. And, uh, and you know, and we start, and we start shooting them. Unfortunately, I was the only one to take shots. Uh, the Afghans were more of a spectator that night. And, uh, the, the first guy I shot was still underneath his blanket. So he died, that did, didn't even know why. The second guy I transitioned over to was just kind of starting to look underneath his, his blanket, um, I had a suppressed gun at the time, but I wasn't running subsonic ammo. So you could, I mean, you can hear it. Right. Uh, so between the white light and, and the rounds going off, I mean, he was interested to see what was going on. And so I gave him the good news. Um, and the, and so, you know, the next guy over, he's a little bit further out underneath his blanket and starting to reach for his gun. And so, uh, I, I give him, I, I give him the, some, the, 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 the same treatment his other two friends got, but every person I'm transitioning over to is a little bit, is a little bit closer to, to being up and ready. And so, you know, I, I send, you know, four to six rounds at, at each guy. But there, here's another thing that means no one I shouldn't say no one, you shouldn't, no one shoots guys twice and, and moves on. Like you shoot guys until they, until they stop until they're no longer a threat. So, you know, everyone's getting four or six. Yeah, you know, the first guy got like eight rounds. Um, when I transition over to the last guy, he uh he's got his he's he has come is he has his gun coming up and I'm still look and I just transitioned over to him and I'm and I'm thinking he's he's closer to shooting me than I am him. And uh I, I push my gun as you know as hard and fast as I can through a couple rounds his way. He he went on full auto. And, and sprayed up. Uh, the first couple rounds hit the base of my feet, kind of walking up. The one of the rounds hits me right in the uh, in my forearm, breaks my arm in half. And then the last round, as it as it as it turned me, it went right through the middle of my nods and broke my nods in half. And they're dangling on my face. And I spin around like four times, and and hit the ground. And uh, I remember laying in the mud going, damn it. I knew I was going to get shot one day. I, I was the only guy on my team without a purple heart, the only guy. And I just remember going, that didn't hurt as bad as I thought it was going to hurt. And uh, at that time, our combo guy, you know, this all happens in a matter of five seconds. Our combo guy runs up and throws a grenade down into the hole or not a hole, you know, down into this, big depression and it uh whatever it does it probably lands besides a rock and it goes off it doesn't it doesn't hit him but what it does is it reminds him that he has a grenade and this happened for whatever reason on this particular rotation almost every time we introduce grenades we got a grenade back it's almost like reminding them oh yeah we carry these too so he throws a grenade out of the hole and I'm laying on my back and it lands within arm's distance of me. And what saved my life was a muddy, rainy night. It sunk down into the mud. It went off a couple seconds later. Uh, it blasted my helmet off, my peltors to shred. You know, it's got some scarring underneath my, uh, my beard. And you know, I got scars up and down my leg. Um, but generally speaking, that mud tamped that grenade and absorbed most of that explosion. Um, and so now, now I'm shot. My nods are shot off. I get hit by a grenade just a couple seconds later. And, uh, and he goes to crawl out of the hole and, uh, our, our combo guy, you know, eventually fills him in with a, with an absolute full mag. I mean, all 30 rounds into this guy and, and it's over kind of, um, so now he actually, gosh, I'm sure he gets as, as he's crawling out, he, 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 he sends out a couple like kind of security rounds and then tries to crawl out and he hits our combo guy in the leg. And so our combo guy's shot and then kills him. I'm shot. I have no nods. Um, you know, I, I have an arm that we, to get to that point, we jumped a lot of walls trying to make a straight line to this point. Now I can't jump walls. You know, I, I got a broken, I got a, I got a, um, 
uh, oh gosh, can't believe I forget these words. Uh, I got a tourniquet on my arm that without a doubt felt 10 times worse than getting shot. The tourniquet was absolutely excruciating. Um, and it took us almost an hour to get back to our, uh, to our element. And during this hour, we made another mistake of, um, it was again, that, that village was pretty lively. And so we're, we're trying to sneak our way back, but we can't use the back roads if we will. Like we literally kind of have to use trails and roads within the village to, to quickly get back to our element. Well, when we stopped and checked out all of my, um, my injuries, we used red light because we were still in a tactical situation, which we, I, I know better. The problem with using a red light is you can't see blood underneath a red light. And now my biggest injury that I was concerned about was, was my arm. I, I, I didn't complain about the massive bleeding in my leg or in my side because I didn't even, I didn't even feel that, that that had happened. And so we never did a full body check on me to see if I had any other injuries. We just addressed the big injury without addressing the, you know, doing a full body check again, something, something we knew better than, and just, you know, didn't, didn't do it right when it counted. So about 45 minutes into this walk back that we had to take the long way around, um, I start blocking out. And I don't know at the time, I didn't know why I was blacking out. And, um, and I'm telling like, Hey guys, we got to stop. Like I'm going to throw up and I'm, I'm about to pass out. And they're like, you know, Brent do not pass out. Like we're not carrying your big ass. Like we have another guy, you know, with a shot leg, he can't carry you. Like you've got to suck this up. And I remember telling them, Hey, I don't control if I black out guys, I'm just telling you it's about to happen. Like I, and they're like, well, do what you can. Uh, we eventually made it back to the, uh, to the rest of the element. And then, and at this point I'm limping and, uh, I don't even know why I'm limping. I just know my leg hurts. And our, our medic comes up and he goes as, as cool as a cucumber. Hey Brent, how's it going? Not good, Dan. I'm shot. He goes, why? He goes, he goes, I can see that. He goes, anything else wrong with you? I said, no, I'm just shot. Please look at my arm. None of the fentanyl lollipops are working. I, I took everyone's, I, I took everyone on patrol has a fentanyl lollipop, including me. I took mine. I took his, I took his, I'm eating everyone's fentanyl lollipop trying to get rid of this pain. And it just wouldn't help with the pain at all. And he goes, well, what's wrong with your leg? I said, nothing. It's my arm. For the love of God, look at my arm. And he, and he laughs and he sticks his thumb and, and this hole in my leg and says nothing. And I was like, Oh, I'm Dan, why would you do that? He's like, and he's like, you're such an idiot. He's, and he cuts off my pant leg. He's like, what happened to your leg? And that was the first time I really realized that I had, I had eaten that grenade and didn't really know it. I was passing out from a loss of blood. Um, right. and by the time I actually got to the helicopter, I, I did pass out from a lack of blood and I, and I passed, uh, uh, I woke up in Bagram the next day, you know, af after surgery. Um, and I remember that, and I remember sitting on the, on the, on the, the hospital bed going, that was a crazy night. I kind of can't believe we got out. Uh, can't believe we got out of that one. That, that is an unbelievable story. <laughs> How long is the road to recovery for you? Not long. I, I, I never missed a rotation. I, I missed a couple jump trips. Um, the, uh, the biggest thing was, um, I kept, they kept on doing washout surgeries on me, um, because I, I, uh, infection was, uh, was a serious concern. I had taken my, my antibiotic pills. Luckily it was one of the things I did do right. You know, we were always told, you know, you get shot, blown up, you know, something and, you know, and the nastiness of Afghanistan, you take these pills and that's actually what saved my life. And even with those pills, um, you know, infection was was a, a, a big problem within my body. Um, uh, I, we finally got the infection, uh, under control. You know, the you know, doctors were trying to, trying to be nice, but they were like, Hey, you should know, like, if we can't get this under control, you, you might lose your arm. And so, you know, every time I went under surgery, 
you know, I was always the first thing I checked to see if I still have my arm. Um, they never ended up having to take my arm. Um, they put a massive plate in there to, to keep my, uh, to keep my arm together. Um, and the bones, the bones actually grow back pretty fast. And, uh, I was down for three months. I mean, I wasn't back to a hundred percent, but I, I, I could operate three, you know, three months later. And, uh, like I said, never, never missed a rotation out of, uh, out of it. Did it change you in terms of how you went into combat or did you just look at it as like, Hey, it's just a numbers game. Certain percentage of people are going to get hit. I got hit. Um, it's not changed my outlook on anything. 100% changed the way I did business. This is probably, I mean, I got to throw a number at it. This is probably my seventh combat rotation, eighth, ninth, whatever it was. Um, and you know, I had slowly been getting, um, you know, I just, I just quit you know, the, the truth. I quit respecting combat. I put myself in situations that I would come out on top. Um, and it definitely put me in situations and, you know, it, it allowed me to, to kill the enemy in ways that other guys, to be honest with you, couldn't or, or not couldn't, wouldn't do. Um, and I was like, yeah, this is just, this is what aggressive people do. You know, I will, I'm stronger, I'm faster, I'm more accurate, I'm better trained. You know, there's not a situation I can't put myself in that I can't get out of within a reason. And, um, and that you will, and you'll get away with it for a little bit, but at one point you will reel snake eyes. And, uh, I rolled snake eyes that night. And if I didn't go through that, you know, rotations later, you know, you know I find myself in Syria, you know, trip after trip. And what is definitely the most dangerous combat uh, that I was in. And uh, if if I had not got that reset, you know, button by getting shot, I probably would have died in Syria. I fully believe that. 